This video is brought to you by Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist, my new book which is a comprehensive guide to all aspects of music theory necessary for playing rock guitar. From blues to the cycle of fifths, from understanding and using modes to choosing the right notes for a melodic solo, from pentatonic scales to chord construction and keys, it's all covered in a clear and concise manner. With accompanying video demonstrations, jam tracks and tabs, you learn to use the knowledge you gain in accessible ways that make sense for less than the cost of a few guitar lessons. Check out the link in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition, as always. I do hope you're well. That was me having a little bit of a play over a chord sequence, or a type of chord sequence I should say, which has been used literally thousands of times, dating all the way back I guess to the, about the 18th century. The reason why it gets used so many times, and has been, and will probably continue to do so, is because it happens to be very complimentary to uh, whatever melody or in this case a guitar solo that you uh, place over the top of it and it's all to do with things called inversions so let's learn a little bit about those today here is the explanation right uh, inversions uh, what are they well um, put simply an inversion is a chord where the note that's happening in the bass the lowest note that you're hearing in the chord is something other than the root note of the chord. And if we think in terms of a typical chord, maybe having root, third, fifth, and seventh in it, um, then you would have a first inversion chord will be um, where you're moving the bass from the root note up to the third of the chord. A second inversion chord would be uh, where you're placing the fifth in the uh, bass of the chord. A third inversion uh, would be where you would have like the seventh note in the in the bass of the chord. So, you know, if, if we put some kind of flesh on that, let's take a C major scale here. <laughs> like that. So if you had a C chord where the uh, E note one, two, three, the third of the uh, of the scale, if that is in the uh, bass, then that is a first inversion C chord. If you were to take uh, a C chord here it is, and play the G note, which we can get there, that's the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, takes us to G. Uh, if that's the fifth of the chord, we put that in the bass, that is a second inversion chord. And, uh, well, you could do a seventh as well, I suppose, but you can hear the different sounds that these uh, chords create. So here's uh, a C chord, just with the C note in the bass. Here's C with an E in the bass. And here's C with a G in the bass. So. It just gives the chord a slightly different flavour. And what you can do is use um, a, a sequence of chords with some inversions uh, kind of uh, put in to create a sense of flow and movement in the bass. Uh, for example, here is a really rather well-known chord sequence where um, I'm not 
playing inversions at all. I'm just playing the, the root note as the bass note each time. Sounds like this. You might have had some inkling of um, what that chord sequence is referencing, uh, but it will become a lot more obvious if we play a few inversions uh, kind of tactfully placed around uh, the chord sequence like this. And what's going on there is that uh, when we play the C chord, we have a C note in the bass. Then we play the G with a third in the bass, a first inversion. And then A minor with an A in the bass. And then a C chord with a G in the bass. You can see what's happening here. We're walking down the scale in the bass line. And we just continue that. Uh, throughout the entirety of the chord sequence and you end up with something that makes you think about skipping the light fandango and dancing cartwheels across the floor for example um, this type of chord sequence with this descending uh, scale bass line it's everywhere you know not only white a shade of pale but we obviously uh, well most people know that that references that uh, J.S. Bach tune uh, air on a G string but it's also uh, when a man loves a woman by Percy Sledge and um, the verse section of uh, Since You've Been Gone by Rainbow, you know, I get the same old dreams, same time every night. That part of the song is you uses this exact same chord sequence in a different key, but the same, basically the same thing. And you'll also hear it in um, Sylvia by Focus. Uh, many sections of that tune are based on this. So it's um, it's a useful thing to know about, and uh, that's why I thought I'd tackle this today. For my wonderful Patreon supporters, um, as well as the usual resources for today, uh, there is a little chord dictionary that I've had sitting around on my hard drive for years, uh, which has many, many chord shapes in it, including some of these um, inversions chords with the uh, third in the bass and with the fifth in the bass and so on. So you can uh, look up any shapes that you are not familiar with in that. So anyway, now you know what to do. Go away and have some fun with it. And as I said in that little clip there, there is uh, a bit of a chord dictionary that i'm going to be putting up uh, with all the resources today including as well the jam track that i was playing over earlier uh, a full tab for that solo in both guitar pro and pdf formats and that little explanation you've just seen there all of that is as usual up on my patreon page there's the address link in the description as i'm sure you know by now it's three dollars or about three pound a month to get access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these youtube videos and obviously a massive massive thank you to to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways all of which are also downstairs in the description and that is pretty much it for today folks hope you found it uh, useful and entertaining in some small way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it and don't forget the live stream as always 5 p.m uk time every friday we drink beer and talk about music and guitars and stuff what's not to like it's a great way to kick off the weekend and i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now